All right, welcome to Autumn Sharp Weekly. And in this video, we are going to add a text field and whatever we type in the text field will be recorded in some sort of a state variable. And then you're going to learn that how you can write code to fetch nearby landmarks. So let's go ahead and get started. If, you, if I go ahead and expand this out and look at the canvas, you should be at least able to see the map view being displayed. But right now, we don't have any way to write the information, meaning the text field. So we don't really have any text field, so we can't really write anything out. We can search for burgers, we can search for anything. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create some sort of a state variable that is going to hold the data while I am typing. So search, which will be of string type, and we'll initialize it with an empty string. Great. So now what I want to do is I want to add a text field. Now, since this is a Z stack, I can actually add the text field right after the map view so that it will appear on top of the map view and not behind the map view. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm gonna go ahead and say text field. The term will be search. The text will be self dot search. This is a bindable text, meaning this it's going to go over there. And on editing changed, we are going to go ahead and do, well, literally nothing. And the final one is the actually the commit. So this is the committing. When you actually press the return key, that's that part, all right? You can see that the text field is actually being displayed. That's fine. Uh, maybe we should give it a little bit more padding, all right? So let's go ahead and give it a little bit more padding. I'm just gonna say padding, there we go. And I'm also going to set the Y offset to be 44. Now the Z stack currently, we haven't really done any alignment. So let's go ahead and do the alignment for the Z stack. And I'm gonna go ahead and say top. And now my text field goes on the top. Let's go ahead and run the application and we're gonna see how our text field kind of looks like. We may have to run it on the simulator, but let's try to run it right over here in Xcode previews and try to see that how our text field kind of looks like when it is displayed on top of the map. You can see already the fans are kicking in. I don't think that's gonna work like, okay, finally it did actually work a little bit. So you can see that it appears like this and you can actually type in some stuff over here, that's fine, okay. Uh, but I can't really see the edges of the text field, so maybe it will be a good idea to give it some sort of a text field border. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say text field style, and I can go ahead and say over here that this will be a rounded border style text field, so that we'll be able to at least see the text field. And you can now see that the text field appears nice and it is visible. Whenever we type something in the text field, it's actually going to go into the search state variable, which we have defined on line number 15. That's great, because the next step for us is to create a function that can get us all the different landmarks, all right? I'm gonna create the function right over here. Obviously you can create it in a different file and you should create it in a different file. And I will call it get nearby landmarks. You can use Google services or a Google Places API to do that, but there is already a API that you can use, which is called the MK local search. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and create a request and I'm gonna call this mklocalsearch.request. This is already part of the MapKit framework. Request.natural 
query language equals to self.search, which means whatever the person has typed in the text box. Now we can create a search, which is MK local search, and we can actually pass in the request that we just created. And then we can just search by calling the start completion handler. This is going to return us two different things. It's going to return us a response and it's going to return us the error. If we can go ahead and unwrap the response, so let's go ahead and unwrap the response, response, and we're going to go ahead and get the map items equals to response dot map items. And right now we don't really have anything to do, so we can actually just go ahead and print out the map items. You can also update some sort of a UI to, to let you know that some map items have been found. If you want to do that, you kind of can, uh, but we are simply printing it out. So this means that we have to start the app, search for something, and call this function somehow. So let's go ahead and see where we can call this function. We can call this function line number 41 when the person writes something in the text box and they press the enter or the return key. So we can call it get nearby landmarks. Great, let's go ahead and build that application. It would be a good idea to actually run this application not in Xcode preview, but in the actual simulator. So let me go ahead and run this. And let's see where our simulator is right there, waiting us. Okay. Hopefully we'll be able to see something displayed over here on the console. If I search for, let's say, coffee and I press enter. And okay, there we go. Well, I don't know if you can read it over here, but it's, it's a little bit, uh, you know, jumbled up together. But you should be able to read that these are all the locations of uh, different coffee shops near my current location. So you can start with, uh, we have place mark, name is Dan CHA. Uh, we Phil's Coffee right over here. You can see Phil's Coffee again. We have 10 Ren, Phil's Coffee, uh, Tastia. Let's see if there's a oh, Pete's Coffee. That's a famous one, Pete's Coffee again fantastic coffee and so on. So you can definitely see uh, different kind of results for coffee. Now, if I go ahead and search for burgers, I get a different result. You can see this is Lazy Dog Restaurant, Five Guys, which is a pretty famous burger store, burger shop, Super Duper Burgers, In-N-Out, that's actually classic In-N-Out burger, which is very famous in, uh, uh, in California. Uh, then we have Jake's and all that stuff. So you can definitely see that it is working out correctly. Now, obviously, this is not really getting displayed on our screen. Now, that is something that we'll have to fix that and how to do that. And we will learn about that in the future videos. If you want to learn more about Swift UI, then check out my course on Udemy, which is Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the best-selling course on Surf UI. It is completely up to date and it has close to 2,500 students enrolled. You can see that this course is around 13.5 plus hours and it starts from really basic creating combining views, building lists and navigation, and then we dive into some interesting topics like state, binding, MVVM design pattern, we even create a complete coffee ordering application, which is integrated with a web API. Later on, I'm gonna show you how you can connect with the core data and even creating applications using Surf UI, which will work on your iOS device, the watchOS, as well as macOS. This is the complete course on Surf UI, and if you get this course, this will teach you everything that you need to know. And I keep on updating the course with new material. The best way to get this course is to check out the link in the description. In the YouTube description, you can find a link. Please click on the link and get the course.
If you use the link in the description, it's really going to help me out uh, because I will get to get a little bit of a bigger share of the revenue, but you'll get the best deal possible. And if you do really like, if you do like the course, then your rating and your recommendations and rating and reviews are very, very appreciated. So thank you so much. And if you do have any questions, let me know.